The long, cold winter months of snow and ice are a great challenge for all the animals living in this region. But in spite of the harsh weather, there exists wide variety of animals, including some of the largest land animals in the world. Most of the large animals feed on plants, leaves, fruits and seeds. But during long winters, they have to depend on tree bark, mosses and lichens. Chipmunks, wood mice and squirrels rely on the hidden stores of seeds and fruits. Small creatures such as invertebrates and insects live under the bark of trees and beneath litter of leaves under the soil. In winters, they hide away in a dormant state. Some of these animals have natural antifreeze body fluids. These substances stop them from freezing to death. Most tega invertebrates feed on dead remains of plants and animals, that is, they are decomposers. Others feed on the heartwood of trees, which are deep inside their trunks. Slugs, millipedes, wood lice and beetles feed on the decomposing plant matter. As the summer is short here, Tega forest is full of life with flying insects which survive by biting larger animals. The elk and reindeer are the Tega's largest plant eaters. Reindeer or caribou migrate from Tundra to Tega region in winter. But elk remains in Tundra throughout the year. It prefers to graze on leaves and fruits of small plants. They have large appetite and can eat 15 kg of food in a day. In winter, due to scarcity of food, they eat barks of the trees. This way, a large population of elk can destroy forests. Wood bison, a rare animal, is found in the southern parts of North American taiga. Unlike other taiga predators, grey wolves hunt unitedly. In winter, when food is scarce, they collectively track down their prey and overpower even the strongest animal. Thick fur or feathers keep many tega animals warm in winter and also protect them from predators. A mammal weasel has brown colored coat in summer. It molds its skin and becomes white in winter. Some mammals like the snowshoe here and stoat turn white in winter. This change of color protects these animals from predators. It also offers better insulation than dark fur. Large animals have better advantage in winter than small animals as it acts as camouflage which is matching the environment. This is because they have smaller body surface but bigger cover of thick blubber around their body. This cover stops body heat to escape and provides heat and energy required in winter. This is why many tega animals are record breakers. The elk is the world's largest deer and wolverine is the largest weasel found here. Many birds nest on tega trees and raise their young ones, then fly south to spend the winter in warmer areas. Some birds, however, remain in Tega throughout the year. The woodpeckers, crossbills, nuthatches and capercaillie are among the few who remain in Tega throughout the year. The capercaillie feed on wild fruits in summer and autumn and on pine needles in winter. They stay on trees during the cold winter days and bury themselves in snow at night.
in summers these birds have typical way to win their territories along with females to win the females they fight till one is seriously injured or dead the woodpeckers use their chisel like beak to dig holes in the tree trunks and eat insects and ants these voracious birds can eat thousands of ants and beetle larvae in a single meal the holes made by these woodpeckers are then used by squirrels and owls as their nests the nutcrackers and crossbills on the other hand eat seeds of coniferous trees crossbills are the only birds that breed in winter they use their stored supply of seeds from the cones in winter and breed throughout the season the nutcrackers breed in spring in winter they use the supply of seeds which they have buried in autumn forest voles are tiny rodents and they avoid winters by digging tunnels in snow squirrels and chipmunks eat pine nuts and bury cones for winter in summer a squirrel can bury around 200 cones in a day stoats mate during the summer but do not develop babies until many months this is done to ensure that young ones when born in the spring have plenty of food available for them the small forest predators hunt beneath the snow the weasels and stoats pursue shrews and rodents these in turn hunt insects while the rodents search for pine cones the great gray owls have thick down feathers which protect them from severe cold they hunt by listening for any scratching in the snow on locating the prey the owl hovers above then plunges through the snow and kills the prey by biting on the neck large animals have difficulty moving through the deep snow except for wolverines wolverines have broad feet just like snowshoes which make it easier for them to walk on the snow its dense long fur protects them from icy weather it does not freeze even when wet wolverines are lonely animals except during the brief breeding season they mostly eat small rodents eggs young birds and insects and sometimes wild fruits and pine seeds they also scavenge on scraps left behind by wolves they are very secretive animals and female wolverines give birth to just two or three cubs in late winters the young ones are ready to hunt for themselves by the end of first summer many taiga animals spend the cold winters by hibernating that is they are inactive and lie idle in winters they eat as much as they can during short summers and put on fat reserves which last them throughout the winters nevertheless some animals rely on the food stored during winters The Siberian chipmunk often leaves its nest to feed on the seeds stored. Siberian taiga is the world's largest forest and covers the area twice as that of Amazon rainforest. It is bordered by the Arctic tundra in the north and Kazakh and Mongolian steppes in the south. Much of Russia's wealth lies beneath the taiga of Siberia. Most of Russia's petroleum and gas reserves are drilled in Western Siberia, while Eastern Siberia has huge coal deposits. Most of the Siberian rivers run into Arctic Ocean and are often blocked by ice. The Ob River, which is 5,410 kilometers long. flows from Altai mountains close to the Mongolian border in Arctic Ocean. 
the Yenisei River is an important transport route. Timber is shipped from this river. It is believed that North America's earliest people came from this region. A unique volcanic rock formation in this region by wind and rain is known as Stolbe. Many of them are found in the Tega Nature Reserve along the Yenisei River. A huge meteorite smashed into the ground near the stony Tunguska River. More than 2,150 kilometers of the forest was destroyed and hundreds of miles away the trains were derailed by the impact. Speaking of the railway, one of the world's longest railways is the Trans-Siberian Railway that links Leningrad on Baltic coast with Vladivostok on Pacific coast. This railway link extends more than 8,000 kilometers. This railway crosses seven different time zones. It crosses deserts, mountains and forests and takes seven days to travel the entire length. Along this railway close to Irkutsk is the Lake Baikal. This river has the largest volume of fresh water. It is also the deepest lake and has around 1,500 unique plants and animals including freshwater seals. In past, people survived here by hunting, fishing and herding reindeers. The first settlers in this region arrived by boat, travelling along the rivers like Ob, Yenisei, Lin, Mackenzie and Yukon. Archaeological survey shows that people have lived in Tega for more than 100,000 years. People from Europe and Asia may have been the first to settle around 30,000 years ago. And this could be when a strip of land existed between Siberia and Alaska. This strip was called the Bering Bridge. But this strip has since then disappeared under sea. Presently, Bering Strait. The Kanti people of North Russia dug caves in the snow and covered the entrance with animal skins. In summers, people made temporary shelters from poles covered in animal skin or birch bark. Some Europeans and Asian Tega people lived by fishing and led a more settled life. In winters, they stored food and lived collectively in groups. Not much is known about Native Americans except in fables and folklore. Probably these natives colonized about 12,000 years back. These people were ancestors of the Algonquians and Anthabascans. These people were hunters and fisher folks. In winters, they hunted caribous and elks. And during short springs and summers, they did fishing in the lakes and rivers and gathered wild fruits, nuts and roots to supplement their diet of meat. Like most people living on this earth, the Tega people too have spiritual traditions and they believe many forest animals are sacred to them. Each clan or tribe believed that they descended from a particular animal which became their revered emblem or totem. Clans and tribes believed it to be sinful to hunt these animals. Like for instance, even if the wolves are killing and attacking their herds of caribou, they will not kill the wolf. They believed that if the wolf was killed, the spirit world would take revenge and send more and more wolves to attack the herds. Tribes of Tega region made totem poles very attractive and decorative. These poles 
are from 2 meters to 16 meters. They are a mark of respect for different functions, like ordering certain animals, to record the clan's history, or even to ward off evil spirits. Siberia became Russian territory, where political rebels and criminals were sent. Joseph Stalin created enormous network of prison camps here. Today, most Siberians live in cities like Irkutsk, Tomsk and Yakutsk. Europeans settled in North American Tega, while the British settled in Hudson Bay. The French settled in Labrador and St. Lawrence River Valley. In 1867, USA purchased Alaska from Russia. Since then, a mix of people from Europe, Asia and native descendants live in Alaska today. Anthabascan descent lives in Tega of Alaska and Central Canada. The tribes of Tanena, Tana Chippewa, Algonquin and Cree were original hunters and lived in remote areas, leading partial nomadic primitive life. However, with modernization, they have adopted to the new lifestyle. But they still retain their ethnic identity by practicing traditional crafts, dances and religious ceremonies. Natives of Tega were tough as life here was never easy. The women gave birth by the campfire in freezing conditions. The newborn child was rubbed in snow before being held by the mother. Even today, people here live without medical facilities and the infant death rate is twice than that of Russia. Many outsiders have brought in new diseases like smallpox, measles, influenza and tuberculosis for which People here have little or no immunity. Also, introduction to alcoholic drinks and drugs are the challenges to be tackled here. Earlier, Russians began to colonize in Siberian Tega. But with the rising demand for furs of foxes, beavers, minks and sables, other countries like France and Britain started invading this place which led to several wars with natives fighting for both the countries. By the 19th century, hunting reduced and demand for fur products dropped. Today, there is a ban on hunting in many parts of Tega. Canadian government began controlling the fur hunting. An environmental hazard is also a major threat to the Tega people. Tree cutting began hundreds of years ago in the Tega region. Loggers from Sweden and Finland felled trees to provide fuel for iron industry. In Russia, the clear felled areas have turned into bogs, and on slopes, this has led to soil erosion. It has also caused nearby rivers to fill with silt. The washed away areas made it difficult for the trees to regrow. Mining has also drawn people to this place. The search of gold and other precious metals has drawn miners and smelters to this place and this has led to creating craters and heaps of unwanted dirt and rocks. They have produced pollution which is spread by wind and rivers. Now let us come towards the East Asian Tega. This place is home to some of the world's rarest animals, including Siberian tiger and snow leopards. Siberian tigers are the world's largest cats. In winter, their red striped fur becomes paler to camouflage in the snow. East Asian Tega extends from Southern Russia Northern China, part of Northern Korea and Japan. Till last few decades, the Arokwin tribe of Northern China lived a nomadic life. 
they herded reindeer and lived in tents covered with birch bark in summer and deer skin in winter. Today, they live a more settled life with modern amenities like television and radios. But then, they still wear traditional clothes and hats made of deer head along with their antlers. The women continue to make household items and canoes from birch barks. The Heilongjiang province of China is home to these nomadic people. This province is thickly forested, although it is close to one of the most heavily industrialized region of China. Large scales of deforestation and acid rains have damaged Japan's Tega forest. The Hokkaido forest in northern Japan is home to macaques, the only monkeys living in Tega. The Kuris Islands have great mineral resources, while Sakhalin Island was once the main region for wildlife. Today, this place is heavily deforested due to industrialization. The Verkhoyansk, a small town in Siberia, is the coldest town in the whole world. The temperature once dropped to minus 90 degrees in 1933. Equally bitter cold city for most of the year is Yakutsk in Russia. Many Russians were sent to this place in exile. But today, diamond mines have made this place popular. Houses here are built on stilts to keep the building's heat from melting in permafrost beneath. Let us now know what the future of Tega is. Largely untamed. The Tega has escaped the impact of modern world. However, with the growth of tourism, industrialization and change in climate have adverse effects in this region. In the year 2000, the International Panel on Climate Change calculated rise in temperature by an average 3 degrees. This will affect the world. The sea level will raise, creating floods in many low-lying areas near the coast. Scientists are of the opinion that built-up carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere are released when fossil fuel like oil, gas and coal is burned. All this gives a greenhouse effect, trapping the heat in the atmosphere and warming the planet's surface. Methane and water vapor too cause global warming. Methane is released when dead material decays and water vapor is added to the air when things are burnt. The Tega will change its size and may shift many miles to the north in near future. If Tega biome gets smaller, it may have an added effect on global warming. It is essential to conserve forest and the best way to establish protected reserve in which wood is harvested in sustainable way. Fire also plays an important role in ecology of the forest by clearing forests and maintaining the diversity of the new habitat. However, this can also be destructive. Across the North American Tega, the area of the forest that burned each year in the 1990s was about double than that in 1940s. If this continues, the benefits of fire will turn into cause of destruction and increased global warming. Pulp and paper mills and ore smelters have also polluted many of the rivers. In 1990s, cellulose processing factories on banks of Amur River near the border of China discharged around 38,000 million litres of polluted waste into the river every year. Close to these outlets, all young fish including commercial species were killed due to pollution. 
Tega people raise reindeer inside the thick forest for milk and they manage by eating snow, buried berries and mushrooms. Despite difficulties, the people of North America, Europe and Asia grow crops in the thin soil and harsh climate of this region. Cereals, wheat, rye and vegetables like carrots and turnip are grown here. The southern limits are being pushed further north as forests are being cleared for growing crops and rearing cattle. In British Columbia and Alberta, farmers grow cereals, oil seed for vegetable oil and plants to feed their cattle. In southern areas of Ontario and Quebec, clover, corn and potatoes are grown. With the rise of population, North America and Russia too will need more land for cultivation and farming. Canada combines cattle rearing and growing crop cereal. There are two main taiga reserves in Canada. One, the Riding Mountain in Manitoba and the other, Charlevo in Quebec. Charlevo contains fir, spruce, pine and maple forests. An important part of reserve is the wetland drained by the St. Lawrence River and its tributaries. The animals found here are lynx, beaver, caribou and blue snow goose. The reserve is a popular tourist destination. Riding Mountain on the other hand is a small island of Tega Forest surrounded by prairies and wetlands of Manitoba. Riding Mountain is the highest point and forms the centerpiece of the reserve. Although a small park, as compared to the other reserves, this does not lack wildlife. Wolves, black bears, moose, large herd of wood bison are found here. However, the park animals are at a receiving end from the hunters. Black bears and deers are lured out of the park with baits and shot there for sport. Bear hunting is legal in Canada, while deer hunting is not. Like many wilderness areas around the world, Tega too is being schooled for reserves of fossil fuels. The rivers in this biome are also trapped for their energy. In Canada, Dams in Tega provide 60% of country's electricity. It is essential to preserve Tega, for their value lies not just in the wood they contain, or their ability to clean the air, or stop the floods and provide a living for millions of people. This biome has a beauty of its own, with different plants and animals. Some scientists suggest planting faster growing tega trees to slow down or reduce global warming. But this does not meet the damage already done. The best way to beat global warming is for the government to reduce the amount of fuel burning and to build flood defenses against rising sea levels. But nevertheless, whatever the future holds, the tega forests continue to flourish for many more years to come.